Are you part of this controversial career trend that some job hunters are practicing? Welcome to NATO applying. Not that kind of NATO. It has nothing to do with combat, fighting, war. It's actually the kind of NATO that means not attached to outcome, which honestly is more of a way of being than applying to jobs, if you think about it. Probably the most useful buzzword yet, though. So the TLDR is the stress of applying to jobs has caused people to stop stressing about applying to jobs. Also, can I ask what exactly is controversial about NATO applying? And who's saying that? Is it the writer of this article? Is it the random person in this Forbes article? Is it it the uh, CEO Jennifer Dulski down here? Is it because businesses and HR think tanks specifically will tell me that employees work better the more emotionally attached they are to their work and colleagues? Both current and incoming NATO appliers are less engaged, which causes a hit to productivity. Apparently, Gallup's 2023 Global State of the Workforce report shows that people who are disengaged at work cost the world $8.8 trillion. Won't someone think of the CEOs that could be going to? Come on, guys, get engaged. To reduce the potential likelihood and impact of NATO applying, Dulski advised is companies must double down on two key areas. First, they should work on inspiring employees around the value of the company mission. Not promotions, not a raise. The company mission. A mission is the reason that's that you that's exist. That's it is the reason yeah, that you have a job inside a company inspired. versus having that role be farmed out to somebody else. <laughs> and you should right. know what that is. Or how about this for a global company mission? Does this make you want to NATO apply more or less? This is where your company resources are being spent. Yep, that'll increase engagement for sure. The company needs to do things like telling customer impact stories and demonstrating the impact the company's making in the world. Welcome to the flock. You're sure to love it here. Spent the morning with our newly hired associates, teaching them all about who we are, what we do, and how we work here at Wawa. So I, I suppose they're celebrating this person, second from the left, best day of his life. I feel like this person's NATO applying right now, in the middle of company inspiration. W welcome to the flock. All aboard the fun train, our team knows how to turn training sessions into unforgettable experiences. Oh god. I mean, are you sure it's the people NATO applying that are costing us productivity in global GDP numbers? Do you feel less attached to the job or more attached to the job when you look at where you're gonna work and uh, it looks like it'll be picking up Easter eggs? That'll be fun. Team culture, inspiration, and impact, I guess. Sprinkled 50 eggs around our lot filled with goodies ranging from candy to gift cards. And we watched our team eagerly hunt them down like kids on a treasure hunt. Just embarrassing. And we watched our team hunt down plastic eggs like kids. It's weird. Moments like these remind us of the importance of taking breaks and having fun together. Who decided this was fun? This is, this is work hard, play hard. I think the definition of that hashtag has just gone so far. It says people are more likely to stay at a company and be engaged when they believe in what they're doing and have line of sight of how their work connects to a meaningful purpose. Anyone seeing any meaningful purpose in this? This is why people NATO apply. It's not the other way around. And second, companies should focus on making sure workers feel understood and valued, which leads to higher engagement. Hmm, anything in these photos make you feel appreciated? Company pizza party, everybody likes those, right? Maybe some Uno. How about a bar of milk chocolate? Dulski states that the goal for employees is to effectively career cushion. If they're impacted by a layoff but have other irons in the fire, it will help them find a new role more quickly. They have other irons in the fire. You mean they have options, they have choices, they have leverage? I asked Dulski how common NATO applying is and where it was trending. It's not, turns out. Once again, we find ourselves having a buzzword being shoved on us because the only articles about this buzzword and topic are all from the same person. I wanted to know more about this rising trend, so I reached out to Jennifer Dulski. What's up with NATO applying? A Q&A with Jennifer Dulski. According to CEO founder of Rising Team Jennifer Dulski, or over here on HR Daily Advisor. What is NATO applying? How the dating trend is coming to the workplace. How did you reach out to learn more about a rising topic that didn't exist until this article existed? Here's what happens if you Google NATO applying. Mm hmm I don't see any rising trend. And here's what happens if you go to LinkedIn. Forbes article, the CEO's company, the CEO's company posting the Forbes article. NATO dating, this is for actually NATO. Given the layoffs and all the generations we're seeing today, NATO applying is now spanning more generations as workers want to make sure they always have connections or new opportunities in place. You may get wind of it soon in your workplace as NATO applying, according to CEO and founder, yeah, I bet. Where's the rising trend? Honestly, there's like a new buzzword every other day. I can't even keep track. Luckily, thanks to today's sponsor, Notion, I put together a list of over 300 corporate buzzwords and other HR jargon so that you never get confused again. Some of these buzzwords might look familiar to you, like quiet firing, quiet quitting, but I have some favorites like number 19 down here. Run it up the flagpole, you know, to test the popularity of a new idea. The poll's provided, the flag is not. Or number 181 here, you know, alignment, everyone nodding in agreement, but nobody actually agreeing. And it seems like the list just goes 
goes on forever. And that's honestly because it does. Watch this. With Notion, you can just hit space, turn on AI, and type in generate 50 more buzzwords like those above. You know it's getting bad when AI is calling out corporate nonsense like this just by itself. Honestly, the AI inside of Notion right now is insane. You can even do this. Ask AI, generate a counterpoint to NATO applying because it's ridiculous to expect someone to be attached to a job they haven't worked at. All right, let's get real here. This whole NATO thing is nothing more than corporate jargon trying to spin an unrealistic expectation. The way it can use Notion's native features along with content generation and summarizing and... So this is the raw mess of a script that I wrote and I wanna organize this because it's unreadable. So I come up here, I click Ask AI, I scroll down a little bit and I come down to see more, and this is what I asked it before. I click OK, boom, done. Organized just like that. You can even do things like make a website with a Notion page. So for example, if I wanted to make this encyclopedia of corporate cringe into a page, I'd come up here, click share. Now you have a shareable web page. Now we can all learn how to make what we're saying more complicated for no reason. So this is what a blank Notion page looks like. It can be kind of intimidating, but if you wanna get a quick start, just click the templates, and now you have templates for almost everything. Tired of sorting through your long meeting notes? Well, they have an AI meeting summaries template. Look at how fast you can make a portfolio for yourself. Click design portfolio, click get template. And again, all you have to do is come up here, click share. Now you can link your portfolio to people in Notion. But not only that, every time you make a change in here, it gets automatically updated on the website version. Anyways, if you like what you see here and you're interested in trying out Notion for yourself, then get started for free and click my link down in the description and upgrade to Notion AI for just $10 more a month. But that brings me to the next buzzword I wanna show you, and it's a real one, it's on Forbes. The number one reason the career trend shadow IT is benefiting careers but hampering companies. Do you know what shadow IT is? It's just basically using like ChatGPT and AI to help do your job. Things that are unapproved, they're not on the company handbook, that's shadow IT. Like, I spoke by email with Christopher Budd, director of Threat Intelligence, who offered several reasons why employees may choose to do this. One reason is that IT is out of touch. Yeah, probably. Another reason could be manifestation of early adopter syndrome, where an employee wants to adopt new technology faster than the official IT group at your job will. So you're a shadow policy follower if you're out there trying to enhance your own working environment with skills that aren't on the company handbook. Like, so is learning off the clock Shadow learning? Like, how far does this go? Chrono working, another career trend to achieve work-life balance in 2024. First off, what do you think chrono working is? Chrono working enables employees to tailor their work schedules according to their individual circadian rhythms. Are you a morning person or are you an evening person? That's the TLDR, we need a buzzword for that. This is the example of why chrono working could be bad. The example of when an employee accustomed to a rigid eight to five schedule might question the authenticity of a sudden policy change, allowing complete freedom in choosing their working hours. Really? You think the employee is gonna be upset that they got more freedom all of a sudden? Initial enthusiasm could quickly be overshadowed by skepticism regarding potential hidden consequences for deviating from the traditional schedule. Okay, so basically they're saying you shouldn't surprise your employees because that can break trust. Therefore, chrono working is bad. What about this one, shadow policies, the controversial 2024 hybrid work trend it's when managers basically let their employees break company policy because either they don't care or maybe they're an understanding human and there were valid reasons and company policy didn't make sense. But more specifically, it's that shadow policies are decisions made by managers apparently not afraid of their own shadows. What? Who comes up with this nonsense? Allowing employees to work remotely even when the company's official policy requires them to be in office. Sounds like your manager's probably a pretty cool person. And look at this part. This collusion between managers and employees is further substantiated. What do you mean managers and employees? You mean co-workers? You gotta separate the classes of workers when it's useful for the article and the buzzword, right? Isn't it normally enjoy your company family? This is just crazy. People trying to improve their own lives in some way and Forbes just has to be like, no, that's a buzzword and it's bad. What do you think of all these buzzwords? I mean, should I add any more to the glossary on Notion? And shout out to them for sponsoring today's video, by the way, I appreciate it. Again, you can check them out with the link in the description. Go organize your life, go get stuff done. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, click that thumbs up button and click subscribe if you'd like to see me call out more of this corporate nonsense and share it with someone else if you think they'd get a kick out of it. And if you have anything you'd like me to showcase on the channel. You can email me, Discord, Instagram, however you want to do it. The links for all of that are also down in the description. Having said all that, I hope everyone's doing well, and I'll see you in the next one.